my channel. Today I'm going to be sharing all the goodies that I picked up at the International Dual Read Society Conference this year. Now I have to say that my favorite part of the whole event though, better than all the goodies that I'm going to share with you, was getting to meet some of you guys in person. I spend so much time sharing my story with you guys that it's especially nice to get out there and to meet you guys and to hear your stories. So if you took time out of your conference experience to stop and say hello and tell me a little bit about yourself, thank you. Okay, let's dig into the goodies that I picked up. The first thing that I wanted to share with you is a read case. Now, this read case is by a new vendor that we have never seen at the International Double Read Society Conference. This was their first year. This is from Otter Creek Double Reads. Now, you know I love a business that has a good mascot. Yeah. I especially liked as well the fact that in this read case, the reads sit down below a lip and that this gives them the ability to be very securely protected, even though it does clasp shut and it's very slim line. What I also found is really nice is I dropped this case directly before I filmed this video and I dropped it open and none of the reads fell out because they are put at an angle and they're securely like locked in there. And also because they sit down inside the case, I found that there wasn't edges chipping of the reads, even though I dropped it. The only thing I can say that I'm not 100% is it doesn't have an air vent hole. So for those of us that are in very humid locations, after a long time of playing, I would consider possibly leaving the reads open in the case in order to dry out if you have that availability. The next thing I went ahead and got was a bassoon magnet so that my fridge knows how much I love my art. I also from Ann Hodge picked up this mandrel vice holder. So this is for mandrel pens. Oftentimes companies will sell just the mandrel portion without the handle in order to save on cost. This one allows for different pins to be inserted in the top of the mandrel holder. And then there is an Allen wrench that tightens a screw within in order to latch that pin down nice, snug and tight. I have to say this is on par with where I want to go with some of the mandrel pin vices that are out there. My only goal would be to move this into wood rather than metal simply because then it would be lighter weight and it would also, I think, feel better in the hand. From Ann Hodge, I also picked up two new styles of thread. I picked up a pewter as well as a lavender color thread. Now I got both of these because I catalog my reads by color and that is my way of knowing what type of cane I'm using, what shape I'm using, the vintage. I can open a read box from five years ago and tell you everything about the read simply by just looking at the wrapping. So having a multitude of threads is actually the easiest way for me to keep up with what is working in my read boxes and what is maybe not the best for right now. Maybe that vintage of cane just needs a bit of time to age. I added silver so that my Hogwarts house style reads, my Slytherin can be a stronger Slytherin because the Enchanted Forest from Squirrely Stash, although the green is fantastic, I feel like it needs just a little bit more of the silver to make it Slytherin strong. Let's keep in mind, I'm not a Slytherin, but I feel like you should adequately represent all of the houses if you're gonna do Hogwarts style reads. And I picked up the lavender because it's one of my favorite colors and I didn't have anything this light in my collection. From there, I went on to Forest Double Read. I did go ahead and pick up another read case. You can tell I have a read case type. I enjoy a good concert black case. This one is carbonite and it also has a really solid latch on it and it holds four separate reads. And this one I thought was really nice as well because it also has the air vent on the side. From Forest, I also picked up a shaper tip. This is a Rieger 13. Now, if you are interested in the Rieger shaper tips, do be aware that the handle that these fit into comes separately. I bought the Rieger 13 largely because this is the Van Hosen style. I know that Barry Stees on his blog, he has raved about the Van Hosen style and the Rieger 13. And as I have been working more and more with Ken Potsick, he asked me in one of our sessions if I had the Rieger 13. And I said, no. And so as soon as I got to IDRS, I headed over to the forest booth so that I could knock this off my list. I picked up some Squirrely Stash jam and jelly. I just, the vibrancy of the color, it just drew me in. 
From Forest, I also picked up one of their bassoon files. Now, this is cute because it says bassoon and it has a bassoon on it. And it's also a great way to do a little bit of reed work that is not as aggressive as a diamond file. Trevco, the music publishing company, Sheet Music, they brought their A game. I have to say that they are one of my favorite reasons to go to the conference because they bring almost everything you can think of. While I was there, I had on my list to pick up some educational outreach pieces, largely for some of my lessons that are some of the beginning bassoonists. So for my beginning bassoonists, I went ahead and I picked up several pieces of chamber music. I picked up some trios, but I have to say, my students in lessons have already been most in love with this one. I think in part because the cover has dancing bassoons on it. All of these pieces and everything I purchased, I will link in the description box down below. For myself and my own performing this year, because I like to support new music, I have Compostela by Jenny Brandon and also Mathematics by Alyssa Morris, which I will try to work up for an upcoming recital. I also picked up two styles of gouge shaped and profiled cane. From Barton Cane, I went ahead and picked up the Billy Short Hertzberg style cane. I did this largely because it has a wider flare at the end of the tube and it gives us a great opportunity where I have also picked up different shapers to talk about shaping and beveling as it exists with different reed making styles. I also picked up from Capital Cane their Donzi gouge shaped and profile. Now they have two different types. They have one that is more narrow and one that is wider. I went with the more narrow of the two. Okay, let's dig into some of the freebies that I received by being at IDRS. First off, everybody got a tote bag. I also got one of their reed soaking cups that came standard in the bag. From Go Bassoon Reads, she gave me a fancy contrabassoon soaking reed cup. From Miller Marketing, I got a Nobel bassoon dog. I know that I have in the past given Nobel bassoons uh, positive feedback on my channel. I do still enjoy them. In fact, JSU where I work, I have suggested that they purchase several of them. I do have to say though, in the long run, if you really wanna take those bassoons to the next level, they do need better vocals than they originally come with. In fact, most of the bassoons at uh, Jacksonville State University, we have matched with non-Nobel vocals. From Miller Marketing, I also was able to pick up polishing cloths. Now, I got several of these polishing cloths. I took as many as he would let me take, simply because of my new adventures in bassoon repair, it is very typical that I have bassoons on hand that need some polishing. When I'm asked about bassoon polishing, I would not suggest polishing your bassoon like every week. I would put a little bit of a breather in between polishing, simply because the bassoons are only silver plated. They are not solid silver, usually on the keys. So there are only so many times that you can polish the keys before the polish begins to disappear. Okay, guys, this is all of the goodies that I picked up at the International Double Read Society Conference. If you enjoyed this, be sure to give this video a thumbs up. If you don't wanna miss a future video and you're not already, be sure to click that subscribe button. And if you got anything at IDRS, please, please, please share down below what you've been buying as part of your goodie haul. Even if you didn't buy at IDRS, I love to hear what you guys are interested in picking up. I will see you guys next time. Bye.